All right. So we don't have carrots. Let's unlock some carrots. Fill the soil and plant a carrot. Before you can plant carrots, you have to do two new things. First, carrots can only grow on tilled soil. But till the soil is simply called till. Well, the drone is over it. I'll till again to untill the soil. All right, that's a problem. The second new feature is that carrots need seeds to grow. You can buy carrot seeds with the new trade function. You have to pass in an item type to trade, like the trade items like carrots. The item can be bought, then it will be bought. You can see the cost of any item in this tooltip. In its tooltip. The tooltip appears when you mouse over the item itself in the code. So in the second slot, I need to know if the ground has been tilled. Actually, you know what? No. I'm going to make the mistakes that you'll probably make if you were doing this for the first time. That you'll probably make. Because then it helps you learn debugging. And it's kind of set up like this intentionally. The game designs this mistake to happen. So let's let it happen. So if we're in the first spot, we're going to till because we wouldn't plant a carrot, right? So we're going to till. And then we need to buy the carrot seed. And then... You. And then... We need to plant the carrot. Uh, carrots. So when we go there, we're going to till the ground, buy a seed, plant the seed. Awesome. Let's, uh, let's run it. See? Nice. Oh, wait. What's happening here? We plant it. It starts growing. We got the seeds up here, and now it's getting removed. And so the issue is this till. This is because this will make the ground the way we want it, but it will also undo it. So we need to only till if the ground has not been tilled. So how do we do that? If uh, we wanted to do the ground check, and I don't remember what it called it uh, thing, but it was unlocked with the senses. So we can just click on senses and it will give us the thing. So um, it's get entity type, but there's also get ground type. It's probably get ground type. So let's get ground type. And if that equals, that does not equal, yeah, we'll do equals. If that equals, um, grounds dot earth, I don't know which one's, which one's which, we'll just do one. If the grounds is soil, then we're going to till it. Otherwise, we're going to buy the trade and we can do the same thing with the, uh, with that other thing, if, um, what was the numbers of items? Number of items, uh, entities not carrots? That feels wrong, wait. Can we do items not carrot seed? We can. If that equals zero, we'll buy a carrot. Otherwise we won't. And then remember these need their semicolon. Cool, let's try running this. All right, well, it's not tilling the ground, so soil is the wrong one. Let's do turf. Look at that. And it's not buying us seeds every time because we put this little check in. Wait, we've got everything being used and we're not buying too many damn seeds. We only buy a seed if we need it. Interesting. Interesting that it's sitting on one. Oh, okay. Because if it's on zero, then we buy it. Yeah, that's fine. We never get more than one. That's okay. We just keep one in reserve. Buttering. No, we cannot. We could buy variables. Now, let's go ahead and buy variables and read that uh, while everything is uh, running. And just grabbing the stuff. Variables are dynamic typed like in Python and can be assigned like this. You declare a variable by naming it whatever you want. In this case, we're naming it A. And then you can store the value five in it like such. So you just say A equals five. See, this is what single equals. A double equals is checking if the value is something and a single equals is assigning. Declare a variable named B and store the number returned of can harvest. Sorry, the value of can harvest in it. So B equals can harvest. Now B is gonna be true or false. You can think of variables as named containers that can store a value. Just like a function, you can name them whatever you want. The equals operator is used to declare a variable and store a value in it. Do not confuse an equals with a double equals. The double equals checks the value and returns true or false. Single equals assigns a value. 
After a variable has been assigned, you can use it in the code to retrieve the valuable the the, uh, the value it contains. So a equals five. Um, for i within the range of a, five. Do a flip. And so that's just going to iterate through this and do the flips. The above loop executes five times because it has a set to five. The i in the for loop is also a variable that is automatically assigned uh, to by the for loop. So this is just special syntax that automatically creates an i. With variables, you can do the same thing uh, also with the while loop. So a equals five, i equals zero. While a, while i is less than a, do a flip and then you can add to it. The notice in the while loop, you're going to have to manually uh, alter your thing. But in the for loop, you don't have to because it's going to automatically add one to it at the end. So in this instance, you could add two if you wanted to do do it by twos. I don't know why you would, but you could. This does the same thing as a for loop above. Oh, okay, and then it just says everything I just said. All right, and then it literally talks about how you can mess with it uh, if you wanted to. All right, cool.